remarks. Can you hear me? Maybe I should put it a little higher. Uh, so it's, a, it's a great honor uh, to be here, and, and we're here to obviously celebrate um, Tom's achievements as a uh, as a scholar. But we've also talked a lot about about him as a mentor, and um, he's obviously been been extremely successful in that regards too. I'm not talking about myself there. But. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you may have wondered um, what, what the secret is to, um, to his success. And, and I've spent the last couple of days uh, thinking about that. Um, and obviously, um, there are a lot of things that go into it. T time is one thing, and, and I think Greg uh, mentioned that. Um, 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 and then there are a lot of intangibles, uh, things that are probably hard hard to replicate. But um, there is something a bit more tangible, and Greg hinted at that. Occasionally, Tom sort of announces these rules um, that graduate students in macro should, should adhere to. And, and uh, in talking uh, to some of Tom's former students, we, we thought it would be useful um, to sort of start to codify uh, <laughs> these rules um, for future generations. And, and I'll call them um, the sergeant rules uh, for academic success. Now, I'm just going to go over them. It's, it's an eclectic list. Um, some of them are somewhat idiosyncratic. Um, but you should know that these have been tested and tried on generations of students. <laughs> and they work. So the first one. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is one that Greg already mentioned. I think it's great. I mean, he's very consistent about the rules. You should take one day off a week. And um, Tom was kind enough to mention this rule to Anka, my wife, which, which actually complicated my, my marriage <laughs> quite a bit. She, she, she enforced that rule. Um, <laughs> this one's really important too. You can't use scientific workplace. When How Tom, she enforce the rule that's because you want to take two days off? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 The third rule is, so you've you got to use latex. Now, when Tom figured out that I didn't know how to use latex, that basically cost me a, a job as an RA. Luckily for me, Bob Hall was willing to overlook this, this hole in my CV and still um, give me a job. Okay. <laughs> These are listed in increasing order of importance, by the way. Um, whatever you say, you can't say reduced form. This one's really important. Uh, there, there was one particular incident during a brown bag lunch in Stanford where, where one aspiring macroeconomist sinned against this several times. And, and, and that was the end of his career in macro. Don't worry, um, this person is now a prominent Applied microeconomics. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we're getting to the really important stuff. You can't read the general theory in your formative years. He was, he was very insistent on that. Um, um, this is a little strange. Don't, don't ask me why. But when you're on the job market, <laughs> you're having dinner, you should order red meat. Um, if you want an explanation, you have to ask Tom. And the last one is really key. Um, when, when you're house sitting for your advisor, um, don't drink his entire collection of specialty beers. Um, uh, you, you know, you know who you are. <laughs> All right. Um, I figured I had to warm the audience up a bit because I'm going to talk about option prices. So for this audience, I think I needed a little bit of a warm up. But don't worry. Um, because that's not really what 